I want to just give some broad outlines. SubhanAllah, just recently I was discussing with somebody uh, who openly became murtad, but he was a very, uh, a very active person in his community. Uh, he was a youth counselor. He was a regular at the masjid. And then all of a sudden he just you know, dropped out for a year. And then he announced that he's no longer a Muslim. Somebody connected me with his brother. We had a very long back and forth. And it was the standard questions. Why does Islam allow this? How could the Quran say this? Why did the Prophet do that? All of these questions about issues that he is finding ethically problematic about the Quran, about the Sunnah, about the Seerah. Now, am I saying that there are certain things in Islam that are irrational? No, I'm not saying this. Islam does not come with anything that is irrational. But it does come with things that are supra-rational. I.e., rationality does not and cannot have a role to judge whether it's valid or not. It's beyond the scope of the intellect. When you look at the questions that these young men and women ask, they inevitably center around a, a core group of issues, all of which are modern. All of which are emanating from within a particular cultural paradigm. So, instead of being so quick to question Islam, take a step back and be just as questioning of your own questions and where they're emanating from. And when you start contextualizing yourself, look, you and I, both of us, we are products of a particular civilization, of a particular code of conduct, ethics, morality, of a particular paradigm. We are living and born and raised in a particular context. And the questions that are being spoon-fed to us by the context that we live in, we also should be brave enough to challenge those questions. And uh, the topic of, of intellect, the topic of the role of reason, is a very detailed uh, how, how to reconcile, or in particular how Ibn Taymiyyah reconciled reason and revelation in Islam. And it's a very fascinating topic, because in that work, this great theologian Ibn Taymiyyah, he actually critiques this notion that reason alone will always arrive at the truth. And he brings forth such beautiful examples. First and foremost, the impossibility of even defining what is reason, what is rational, what is intellectual. What might be intellectual for us was not intellectual a generation ago. What might be rational for us was not rational a hundred years ago. Rationality itself changes from society to time to place. And there, there is nothing that we can judge rationality by in and of itself. Now, does this mean, as I said, that Islam has nothing to do with reason? No, not at all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to think, to ponder. But if you look at the Quranic commands to think and reflect, the Quran never challenges Allah's revelation. The Quran never tells you, challenge Allah's revelation. Rather, the Quran addresses non-Muslims and says, think, is Islam true or not? Think, is the Prophet true or not? Think, if this, is this book, the Quran, from Allah or not? Once you come to the conclusion that the Quran is the book from Allah, that the Prophet Muhammad is a true Prophet, that's where you use your mind. Once you admit and submit that the Quran is the, 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 the book from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you are not supposed to question each and every minutiae and law and wisdom. It might not be something that is fully understood rationally, but neither is it irrational. We judge Islam based on what? On theology, on purpose of life, on the fact that the Quran is a book from Allah, the miracle of the Quran, which is a separate topic. Once we've established that these things are true, we then accept the message as it is. We don't, we don't have the luxury of tinkering with the message itself. And therefore, if we rely too much on these questions and think that our mind itself will be able to answer it, then we are doomed to fail. Because I will never be able to explain to you every single detail of Islam, right? And we have to realize that we should think about the questions themselves and where they're emanating from, and perhaps the questions themselves are flawed. And I want to give you just one simple example that the right always uses, Islamophobes always use. Hey, Allah, 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 h